Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, and we resume our study in verse number 67 today. So get your Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 26, the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. This is a place where you can go to study the whole Bible with me. Four series going through the Bible, verse by verse. And you choose from whatever series you want to study, going back over 34 years to the one that I'm completing today, or working on completing today. And uh, you choose the series, you choose the book of the Bible, the chapter, the section, click and listen, that's all you have to do. Study the whole Word of God, verse by verse, at your pace, at your convenience, at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. So let's pray and get into today's study. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus has been arrested, falsely accused. He and this is by the religious leaders, the Jewish Sanhedrin, and uh, which would be basically their high court in religious matters. They arrested Jesus, falsely accused him of blasphemy, brought in some false witnesses who lied so that they could charge him. And with that, it says in verse 66, they, they talked to each other, the religious leaders, what think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. He should be put to death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands. God spoke these words that I'm about to recite he spoke these words 700 years before Jesus was born by the prophet Isaiah. And he had Isaiah write him down in his book. And it goes like this. I gave my back to those who strike me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. Don't look at Jesus as the victim. Jesus is no man's victim. Jesus walked into this situation knowing that all of this abuse would take place. It had to, to fulfill scripture so that he could suffer and die for our sins. He walked into this willingly. You know, the Bible says that only a fool would refuse to avoid trouble when they see it coming. But you are not a fool if you step in front of a gunman and take a bullet for a friend. Jesus is no fool to suffer humiliation and death for us so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. He stepped in front of us and he took the bullet of God's justice. The Bible says, Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for a friend. Jesus laid down his life for us, even though sinners, all of us, have been so unfriendly toward him. All of us have but he still laid down his life for us. 67, then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that smote you? They blindfolded Jesus, and then they beat him. They blindfold him, and they take turns punching him, and they mock him by saying, who punched you? Guess. You know, this was, this was actually a, a game. 
that the soldiers played back in those days called Hot Hand. They would take a prisoner, blindfold him, and they would take turns punching him. Guess which one of us hit you? And they said, if you guess right, then we won't punch you again. And of course, no one ever guessed right because they would lie and they would just keep punching. That's the game that they are playing with the Son of God. Treating him worse than a maggot. Treating him horribly like dirt, like a worm. And of course, Jesus... If he would have said, that punch came from you and named the name, and this one came from you, named the name, they would have probably all dropped dead right on the spot. Jesus could have told them who threw the last punch right then and there, but he didn't. That doesn't mean that he won't. It just means that he did not. He'll tell them. He'll tell them when they're standing before him at the great white throne judgment. And they won't be laughing anymore because the one that they punched will be sitting on his throne and ready to damn them to hell forever. 69. Now Peter sat outside in the palace and a damsel came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee. Here's Peter's golden opportunity. He said he would stick with Jesus, right? He said, everybody else is going to forsake you, Jesus, but not me. I'm going to hang in there. Here's his golden opportunity. He blew it last time in the garden because he ran away with everybody else when Jesus was arrested. But now is his, now is his chance to do what he promised Jesus he would do. Here is Peter's big opportunity to redeem himself after ba abandoning Christ in the garden. But look at 70. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what you say. The little girl said, uh, you, were, you were with the Galilean, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Denied him. Remember how Peter was ready to fight with the sword in the garden? He was ready to do physical battle to protect the Lord Jesus Christ, but he wasn't ready for this spiritual battle with this little servant girl. He wasn't ready because he slept instead of praying like Jesus told him to do. Jesus warned, pray, pray, Peter, because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you don't fall into temptation. Pray that you don't blow it. And he slept. And now he's weak, spiritually speaking. Oh, he could have punched this little girl in the face. He could, have, he could have knocked her out. And probably not a few others. But that's not the kind of battle that he's engaged in. Screaming. Using a weapon. Using your fist. They're all weapons of the flesh that accomplish absolutely nothing for the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to be filled with the word of God. God wants us to be prayed up and standing firm for Christ and speaking the truth and love. Those are weapons of the Holy Spirit. Those are the things that will accomplish something for Jesus. But if you're not prayed up, you're not going to be ready to do it. You will cower in front of the enemy or in front of a challenge. 71. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said to, to them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied with an oath. I do not know the man. So he swore with an oath. In other words, that means he called down a curse upon himself if he was lying about not knowing Christ. So, first Peter takes off in the garden, runs away in our Lord's, at our Lord's arrest. Then here he tells a lie, and then he swears 
that that lie is true. This is so typical of a liar. Maybe you have noticed that. Usually liars suspect that people don't completely believe them. They know they're lying, so they figure other people might, might know that as well. And that's why they try to support their lies with oaths, I swear, or maybe just by getting loud. And that's what, that's what Peter is doing. 73, and after a while came to him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. See, Galileans, which is what Peter was, Galilean was up, in, up north, northern part of Israel, back in the sticks, as it were. And Galileans spoke with a definite accent. So when Peter spoke, they all knew that he wasn't from Jerusalem. He wasn't from this area. He was a Galilean just as sure as somebody from Wisconsin knows when somebody is from Alabama or Arkansas or whatever, North Carolina. I remember I, I was in North Carolina for a while. This is uh, probably about 25 years ago. Man, maybe longer than that. Yeah, probably 30-some years ago. And um, I'm, I'm on my motorcycle. And I'm in rush hour traffic, and I didn't know where I was going. I was lost. So finally, after, and I was on like the belt line, the highway, and finally after trying to figure out where I was and not succeeding, I decided to take an exit and stop at a gas station. So I did. I took the exit, stopped at the gas station, and I asked the person where such and such a place was. And they gave me directions. They were very nice. And I just kind of shook my head, you know, affirmative. And I, and I walked away thinking, I have no idea what you just said. Because the accent was so strong. I mean, I knew she wasn't from Wisconsin by the way she talked. And that's the same thing that was happening here with Peter. They all knew that he wasn't from Jerusalem. He was from Galilee, right where Jesus was from. They all talked the same. So, that, along with the fact that no Galilean would have had any reason to be in the court of the high priest at that particular time in the middle of the night, unless they just happened to be one of Jesus' disciples, all that <clears throat> evidence convinced them that Peter was one of them. And I say, you know, that's good. That's good. That all the evidence pointed to the fact that Peter was one of them. That's good because it's going to give Peter another chance to do what he should have done to begin with, and that's proclaim his loyalty to Jesus Christ, just as he said he would. 74, then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not the man. Peter swore again that he didn't know Jesus. He began to curse and swear, and by that he was saying, may God Almighty strike me dead if I'm lying. And it's a good thing for Peter and for all of us that God doesn't always give us what we ask for or do everything that we ask him to do, or we wouldn't be long for this world. 75, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said to him, before the cock crow, you shall deny me, because the last part of verse 74 says, and immediately the cock crew, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which he said, before the cock crow, ye shall deny me thrice, and he went out and he wept bitterly. Peter was humiliated, and he knows that he deserves every bit of that humiliation that he feels. When we fail the God that we love, and we do love him if we are Christians, when we fail the Lord who died for us, we feel like dirt if we are saved. We feel just like Peter. And we also know that we should feel like dirt. Peter cried because he really cared about Jesus. Jesus was the last person in this world that Peter wanted to hurt, but he hurt him. Two lessons. Stay prayed up so that you will be bold and strong in the face of persecution and temptation. 
But if you fail, remember, if you fail and you fall into sin, remember, Jesus is willing to forgive you of even the most disgusting sin. God says, a broken and contrary heart he does not despise. Never fail to confess. And I'm out of time. Study the Word of God with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry and help me to get out God's Word, then pray for me and pray for God's Word. And also, when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the Donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Let's get out God's Word together. What do you say? Please pray for me. Until next time, so long.